Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the open beta for the latest Call of Duty is available now at the time of this video and the arrival of this demo coincided with the delivery of yet another GTX 750 Ti to my office. I mean bedroom. We usually test this once hugely popular and easily recommendable card once a year, but I thought why not see what it can do with every big AAA release in what is a continuous documentation of its lifespan. This specific card we're testing today is the Palit 750Ti Storm X Dual Edition. It's a 60 watt component that requires no 6 pin connector, so running it on those all grey OEM PSUs you find in some pre-built systems has never been and should never be a problem. Problem. This specific card also has a 1202 MHz base clock, 1502 MHz memory clock and a boost clock of 1281 MHz, though the card actually ran at a near constant 1346 MHz during today's gameplay. Speaking of which, let's get into that. Now remember this is the beta version of the game, so performance could always change between now and release day next month, and the frame rate could also be impacted depending on the map and game mode that you play. I decided to test the card with whatever multiplayer map I got dropped into, and throughout my test I'd drop the resolution from 1080p to 900p, and then 720p. Now I am pretty terrible at this game, so it uh, goes without saying that the focus should be on the performance and not my terrible, awful gunplay. So to start with, the game threw us into the Moscow map, and this is what we'll be benchmarking first. Immediately I was quite impressed with this card, and when I looked up a few other benchmarks for comparison, it seems that my 750Ti was doing a bit better. Now I'm not bragging or anything like that, I was just quite surprised. This is a 2GB card, and the game defaulted to the low preset as expected, but I made sure that everything was set to low anyway as a couple of things had been left on medium. Anti-aliasing was also disabled here in an attempt to try and squeeze as much performance as possible out of this aging mid-range part. The average frame rate at 1080p low was exactly 48, with a respectable 1% low. The 0.1% low was quite bad, and it will be at all tested resolutions during this map's gameplay. This would indicate some stutter, but I couldn't really feel any severely noticeable issues when playing. Of course, the closer to 60fps in first-person multiplayer online titles, the better, so let's see if we can clamber our way up to that solid average figure. 900p with the low settings actually made this possible, but again I should reiterate that this was during my Moscow gameplay. Different maps will vary. We were also seeing a decent 1% low here, and of course a low 0.1% figure. Although we were seeing at least 60fps on average, this doesn't mean that the game won't dip below that. There were certainly some sub 60fps drops, that's for sure, especially in situations where smoke filled the screen or during intense firefights. Actually, to be honest, this didn't always cause drops, the loss in frames was sometimes way more random and would happen at unexpected moments, but there was nothing significantly off-putting here. At 720p, the frame rate hit nearly 88 FPS, which just seems too high. That's an odd thing to say during a benchmarking video, but at this point I'm wondering if my 750Ti is really a better card in disguise. From other results I've seen, this shouldn't really be possible. What I'm going to do is actually test another map in a minute to see how it compares because it might just be that the Moscow map is really lenient towards older and weaker cards. I'm hoping that we'll still see a 60fps plus average at those lower resolutions but before we do that I'm just going to show you a bit more footage from Moscow here. There were some occasions where the frame rate hit over 100fps as well so at this point I double checked that I was actually running at 100% resolution scale and not something like 480p. It's still worth mentioning that the game does drop below 60fps sometimes which is more noticeable this time around because going from say 90 to 55 feels worse than going from 65 to 55 which is what was happening at 900p. Alright, so the next map here I decided to test was Cartel. Now it's time to uh, cross-examine these results. We actually saw less performance here 
as I thought we might, but it really wasn't too much different at higher resolutions. If we start with 1080p again, with the low settings all round, then we were seeing just over 40 frames per second. Now this isn't bad by any means, but it is a little worse than the Moscow map performance. The 0.1% low results were actually better here, so on paper this map should exhibit less stutter with this graphics card, but again, I couldn't feel anything gameplay wise that was off-putting. Now I know I said these sort of games weren't my thing, but I've been having a pretty good time with this. The maps seem fun so far, the gameplay as always is fast paced and exciting and I'll definitely be getting the full game. Maybe we'll even put together a minimum requirements PC for it when the time comes. Now dropping things to 900p here meant we still fell short of a solid 60fps on average unlike with the previous map, but things still felt pretty smooth. 57fps to me doesn't feel too different from 60 if at all, and the 1 and 0.1% lows were fairly good as well. Honestly after testing this map it seems like the newest COD should be fairly lenient towards lower end and older cards, and I can't imagine that the final release will differ too much, considering it comes out in less than a month now. It may already be out at the time you're watching this video, in which case you may have proved me very wrong, but hopefully if I do hear reports of severely different performance then we will investigate that with this card again. The average figure at 720p was at least 10 frames less than during our Moscow gameplay, but plus 70 FPS is certainly not problematic. The game doesn't look great at this resolution as you can imagine, especially when we have the anti-aliasing turned off, but for those of you, and I know for a fact that there are a few of you who run with 1366 by 768 monitors or lower, we'll be pretty pleased to know that Black Ops Cold War is more than playable, at least with these two maps at a competitive frame rate with the 750 Ti. Overall it's a better set of results than I had imagined it would be going into this, but we'll have to see how the gameplay holds up next month and whether or not things are severely impacted. As I said before I can't imagine they will be, especially with less than a month to go, but of course during the campaign as well and Warzone I'd imagine that you'd see very different frame rates indeed. But for now, and at this point in time with the beta, well, the 750Ti still seems to be doing okay, and that's always nice to see. One thing I also want to quickly mention, I'm not sure if you've noticed it, but in the distance some of the trees start off as odd shapes before actually turning into trees, and there are a few flickering rock texture problems. I'm not sure if this is due to the low settings that we've opted for, whether it's a bug in the beta or whether it's just a driver problem. I have a feeling it's just because of the low settings. The view distance is also set to low. Now this doesn't actually affect how we see players appear, we can see players and that from far away, but perhaps the textures are affected in a way that makes everything look a bit blocky before it pops in properly. I just wanted to bring that up because you may have noticed it throughout this video. I didn't intend for the video to run on this long, I wasn't going to test another map, but when I saw the pretty good frame rates I thought, yeah let's test another one just in case, and I was pleasantly surprised, I hope you guys were too. If you enjoyed this video leave a like on it, if you didn't enjoy it leave a dislike on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, let me know how the beta runs for you on your hardware, especially if you have a lower end entry level PC, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.